Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Welcome to today's webinar uh, that will discuss power solutions in a post-pandemic world. We have Bill DeRosier from Legrand with us today, and uh, he'll be starting his presentation after my brief introduction. Uh, I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Facility Executive Magazine, and I'll also be uh, doing the Q&A at the end of the presentation today, so please be sure to send in your questions. The webinar is presented by Legrand. Uh, before we, would, we do get started, I would like to talk about the Q&A that will be at the end of the presentation. You can send those in via the question section in your control panel on your screen. You can send those in at any time and we'll address them at the end. Uh, please note the orange arrow on the control panel at the left you, that will expand or collapse your panel, so please make, make sure it is expanded. If you have any questions, uh, technical difficulty or other uh, non-content related question during the presentation, you can also use that to send us a question and our team will answer you uh, directly uh, during the event. Uh, also, if you're interested in continuing education credits, you will get a certificate of attendance and an email from Facility Executive after this event, and you can report that to your association. Uh, now I'll jump right into it. I'll introduce uh, your speaker, Bill DeRosier, who you see on screen here. Uh, Bill is the Sales Training Manager at Legrand's Electrical Wiring Systems Division, and in his 30-year 33-year tenure at the company, he's held roles in specification sales, manufacturing, product marketing, uh, and strategic account management, and for the past 13 years in sales training. So we're looking forward to a good presentation today. He'll be talking about a lot of the um, you know, solutions that you might be looking for in your facilities uh, as we re-enter the workplace and, and reconfigure. And again, we look forward to your questions as well and um, to Bill's presentation. Hi, Bill. All right. Hey, I just want to clarify one thing. I've been with Legrand for almost 34 years, but I started when I was 12, just in case anybody's doing the math. Yeah. Okay. So with that, I'm going to turn my camera off. So we're just focus on the uh, presentation itself and we will get started. So first of all, I just want to thank everybody. Um, Anne, are you going to turn your camera off too? There we go. Uh, for joining us today. And um, I look forward to this. So Opening marks, let's just start by saying that, you know, we're looking at commercial spaces and we know that really they're never going to be the same again. With the new regulations and requirements due to the COVID-19 pandemic, many facilities need to make quick changes right now. Even with so many unknowns about long-term planning, there are many ways to reconfigure commercial spaces so that they're safer immediately. So just a quick look at the agenda, um, you know, post COVID impacts at the commercial office space. I should have changed that because really it's at any facility. Uh, we'll be talking about products that really address commercial office space, hospitals, hospitality, uh, education. So there's a, a lot of, uh, of products or solutions that will address many of the new codes and requirements for reopening your space. We'll look at the outdoor solutions and how a lot of people are looking to outdoors, not only for social distancing, but for fresh air, which is a little cleaner and healthier than, than indoors. Uh, we're going to look at products for the indoor space as well. Um, we're going to look at some new products by a company called Connect Tracks that uh, Legrand just purchased about a year ago. Uh, we'll look at touchless controls and how they uh, help mitigate the spread of uh, viruses, uh, chemical resistant switches and outlets. One of the things that we'll talk about is the fact that uh, NEMA, the National Electrical Association of Electrical Manufacturers, is basically put out guidelines for cleaning, uh, again, uh, those, those surfaces that we touch all the time, like switches, receptacles, doorknobs, handles, things of that nature, elevator buttons. Uh, there's very strict requirements around cleaning, again, to help try and safeguard all of us as we return uh, to work and school and everything else. Uh, and then we'll look at some resources and we'll uh, have some question and answer session. So the first thing we're doing is let's explore how COVID is actually impacting the commercial office space. And you can look at the slides as I go along here. Um, but anyways, because office space is rapidly changing due to all these impacts of the COVID pandemic, Businesses are approaching reoccupancy as well as new building construction holistically in order to mitigate the risk of transmission as well as supporting the well being of all staff. So, so, facility owners must assess hazards and apply creative strategies to try and reduce these risks. 
So what are some of the major trends? I mean, we've been doing a lot of interviews and a lot of surveys with our customers, not only in users, but specifiers and engineers, contractors. And these are some of the trends that we're seeing right now. Number one trend is customers that we've interviewed, they want flexibility of the space. They wanna be able to not only move spaces around, use them for different purposes, set up for greater spacing, maybe set up additional spaces outdoors where we didn't traditionally work. Uh, that was the number one thing was that flexibility. Uh, personal space and safe collaboration. You know, if you really look at things for a long time, spaces were getting smaller. There was this whole thing called hoteling. People were coming to offices. I know my daughter works up in Boston and she told me every day she went to work, she was signing into a different space. I don't think that's gonna be happening for a while. People want their own space to feel safer and they want more distance uh, while they're working as well. Working from home, at least part-time. I mean, we're all working from home now or, or many of us are working from home. Uh, and we think that's gonna continue at least on a part-time basis to help people you know, have a little bit more work-life, uh, home-life balance, but also to help reduce the overall amount of people that are in the office at any one time. So we think companies are gonna be uh, a little bit more flexible with people working from home uh, and virtually um, a little more often. And then there'll be a greater, a greater focus, as I just mentioned, on work-life balance and the use of outdoor spaces as a mitigator. So now let's look at the challenges facility owners and managers will face as they try to reopen these spaces. And again, this is uh, some things that we've heard, some research that we've done. The big new focus, again, is on uh, health, safety, and wellness. Uh, as I mentioned before, more spacious floor plans for social distancing will be needed. Uh, a need for improved air filtration inside and create more outdoor workspaces for that fresh air and that minimized risk of transmission. Uh, I mentioned touch-free devices to minimize the risk of transmission again. Uh, and then of course, um, you know, cleaning those surfaces as well. And then the, the big thing here is, is that these trends probably are not short term. They're probably gonna be with us for quite a while. Uh, as a matter of fact, I just heard something the other day and who knows how true this is and, and hopefully it's not that the likelihood of more of these type of uh, pandemics is very high uh, going into the future. So there's something to look forward to. So what are some specific challenges? Well, according to a new AIA, and I hope all of you know that's the American Institute of Architects initiative that they just uh, put out that's titled Reopening America, Strategies for Safer Offices. Facility owners will need to assess hazards in all building areas, such as entrances, lobbies, collaboration areas, managerial offices, common workspaces, restrooms, elevators, et cetera. And they're gonna to need to make modifications where possible. COVID-19 protocols will require many changes in commercial office buildings, such as workspaces will be moved further apart and or reconfigured for different purposes. The need to install plastic sneeze guards. Um, I haven't been to our office lately, but we have a video out about a lot of the new safeguards that were put into place. So as we do start to return to our offices in West Hartford, Connecticut, uh, they had a video and they showed these, these plastic sneeze guards up uh, between work cubicles. And a lot of new signage uh, has gone in and other things have been done to help people you know, maintain that six feet of a distance, remind them to wash their hands, wear masks. Uh, things like conference rooms may have fewer chairs. Some may be closed altogether, at least for the near future. Um, minimizing of work storage areas and, and a whole bunch of other things. So it's all being done to keep workers safe and healthy. And this will also include frequent, as I mentioned earlier, cleanings with disinfectants. So facility owners are looking at ways to minimize the need for touching surfaces, which will also minimize the need for cleaning them, uh, which is you know, uh, labor intensive and expensive. So we're gonna start by talking about some comprehensive solutions for providing power and charging into outdoor spaces while meeting the code and maintaining occupancy safety. 
Uh, as we said, businesses are adding rooftop decks and outdoor terraces to provide additional work areas with fresh air and again to allow for more of that social distancing. Outdoor spaces with better air circulation provide a lower chance of transmission or contracting the virus. And right now we're all focused on COVID, but those needs, as I said, and desires to protect ourselves against other viruses are gonna remain with us for a long time. This is not something that's just gonna go away anytime soon. So the one thing I talked about, we wanna address, you know, people going outdoors. How do you provide power charging communications and things of that nature? Uh, for people to work outdoors. And, you know, we've probably all seen some of the examples shown in this picture, extension cords, which can be, you know, way too long and, and not consider things such as voltage drop and overheating, um, unsafe multi-taps that are, again, overloaded. And uh, a lot of people buy very cheap multi-taps uh, made of plastic that can catch on fire. And, and the number one thing I look at here are these these stub ups and you've probably seen these things in many cases you might have them on your own grounds but you know things can happen to these they get damaged the the wild and use covers get broke off the conduit gets broken off especially as it gets older sunlight you know uh weakens the pvc the cold weather can make them more brittle and things like power equipment you know snow removal equipment lawnmowers uh people you know tripping over them which is a hazard in itself uh, they break these things and they cause very unsafe um, conditions for anybody plugging in or using uh, these type of stub ups. And they're all uh, creating a need to look at a more permanent, better, safer solution. And we're going to talk about those uh, in a minute, which is um, ground boxes. But first, let's think about adding power to a space and charging. Uh, for two different applications. The first concern is about providing convenience power and USB charging to visitors and guests, while the second is about providing permanent power to those facility teams using it for events and for maintenance. To begin, we'll talk about the way you can bring power and USB charging to an outdoor facility in a safe, attractive way for all of your guests. For this purpose, one good option is an outdoor power charging station like the one you see in the image here, the guy's leaning on it. Mobile device charging stations are used by the public and the private sector in the commercial, hospitality, education, retail, and really think about transportation markets. I mean, I travel a lot, I'm in airports, and you see people all the time clamoring around trying to find someplace to plug in their phone and charge up. Or, or their computers, laptops, whatever. So uh, really any type of space where people spend time waiting or working outdoors on a laptop, a tablet, or a phone is a good application for one of these outdoor charging stations. So at Legrand, we have charging stations that really bridge the gap between good aesthetics and durability. Options like we're showing here with multiple finishes and multiple heights, some with lights, some with area lighting, some with just access lighting, a lot of varieties, a lot of options, and they can match the desired form and factor. Whatever the decor is, we have so many different colors and finishes that you can find something that fits into the decor. The other important thing to look for is a UL listed product. Outdoor charging stations should be UL listed. They should be UL listed to 1773, and they should also adhere to the requirements of UL 231 to ensure that their products provide safe access, again, to outdoor power where it can be wet, okay? And that's always uh, an issue. They should also have a NEMA 3R rating to ensure safety and that they're tested and evaluated to comply with all applicable standards so they'll withstand things like rain, snow, wind, sprinklers, even salt air. So you, you can see again, when you put outdoor power and outdoor charging, there's a lot to consider to be able to do it safely and meet code. You can, you can select, as you can see from the pictures here, several different devices to choose from. They're really standard NEMA type openings. So you can put all kinds of low voltage and power devices into these. 
uh, you should just always think about using GFCIs because they're outdoors and um, you know, weather resistant receptacles and devices where possible. The nice thing is that these things install uh, just like a standard traditional bollard that you would have on campus. You simply use an uh, enclosed uh, included anchor kit to mount the station to concrete. You stow up the conduit to about eight inches, and then you place the, the uh, charging station right over the top of that, and you're up and running uh, quickly and easily with a very attractive, safe uh, application. The next thing that we like to think about is solar charging options. So this would be something, you know, it's an off-grid option and uh, being charged by solar can really minimize expense. The Grand Solar Stations can be attached to a standard four inch light pole. And that's really great because it helps match the light poles that are on your campus already. So everything looks nice, everything matches and you can just use the standard light pole that you might already have on campus. The solar design also eliminates the need to trench for power, right? You don't have to dig these big long trenches and tear up the yard. It's going to save time, it's going to save money. Higher education campuses, corporate facilities, the hospitality industry, public parks and municipalities are all big on providing sustainability and solar is a big play in these markets which are really big on providing sustainable solutions. So that kind of wraps up what could help users such as visitors and guests to not only power up or charge up and connect outdoors. What we want to do now is we want to look at the facilities and what they need to bring power to events and to maintenance equipment. Facility managers are often forced to set up a generator or run extension cords to, to provide power for outdoor events. But if you think about these events in advance, you can avoid all the unattractive and labor intensive temporary power setups and instead create permanent access to power that blends into the space. And this has become even more important as we see the improvement in technology and the design of outdoor products such as furniture, lighting and cooking appliances. Spaces are now being used year round, even in colder climates where, and like where I live here in Connecticut, although today is a gorgeous, beautiful day in the 60s. Uh, in those areas, it's ideal to have something that's permanent that you can just plug a cord into versus having to deal with all kinds of temporary, you know, either generators or running large extension cords and trying to protect those cords. Um, the grounds, the grounds, ground box is what we're going to talk to next. So Legrand offers solutions that can be used year round, no matter what's happening outside. And we just mentioned most campuses are using these spaces year round, especially if you think about sporting events. In order to really fit into a space, the box sits flush with the ground. And this eliminates trip hazards like the one we talked about with the stub up installations uh, in the picture we saw earlier. The Grand offers uh, different colors, um, you know, to match the different environments that they might be used in, whether it be grass or turf, cement, gravel, brick, or other types of pavers. And the other item to consider here is how to keep this power access secure. As I mentioned earlier, this is not for guests and visitors or the public. This is for the facility user, okay? So how do you keep people out of that? Well, these boxes are lockable. If you look at the little picture, Right up here in the middle of that cover is a lock. And the nice thing about that is these are actually lockable even while in use, whether they're in use or, or um, not in use. When you close the cover down, the little door at the bottom, this black area, if you look at the picture at the top, this black area is actually a door that opens, that slides down, has rubber inside of there that molds to the shape of the cables that are egressing out of the box. And um, you know, then you close the box down, you have your cables coming out, you lock the, the door again, and, and now you have no unused, uh, unauthorized use, if you will, um, of that power. And we've noticed lately that there are a lot of boxes out there uh, that claim to be watertight. But in most cases, within a year, these boxes are either cracked or water has somehow found their way in. 
But Legron is the only company, company that has really thought about doing something different, a very unique approach to maintaining safety and keeping the water out of our box. Our ground box uses a diving bell designed to maintain an air pocket around the connections. This cover that we talked about lifts straight up out of the box and it hinges backwards. And then you just plug in and make all of your connections. Then when you lower it straight back down in at a straight angle in, this maintains an air pocket where the connections are safe. It's just like if you took uh, a glass of water, maybe when you were a kid doing an experiment in school and you lower it into a bucket of water, if you put tip it upside down and straight into that bucket of water, no water gets into that glass. Why? Because the air is trapped inside. If air can't get out, water cannot get in. Okay, so that's why we call it the diver bell technology. And one of the most cons important considerations in an outdoor box, like we said, with power is safety. And this ground box is NEMA 6P rated, meaning that it can be submerged in water without creating any safety hazard at all. In fact, we've installed one of these boxes in a Texas high school football field and it survived over 50 inches of rain over a period of two to three days. If you guys will remember Hurricane Harvey just a few years ago where Texas was, Texas was hit with like, I don't know, three feet of water in a matter of days, uh, that field was completely flooded. When the water drained away, they had a football game, they opened these boxes up, plugged in, everything was safe, everything was dry, everything worked just fine. The box is designed not really so much to keep water out of the box, but water can go in and out of the box as you can see these drainage holes. But this area right here in the middle, not only the cords that you see here, but the, uh, the receptacles themselves are all airtight, okay? So nothing, no air can leak into this area and no water can fill that area. Uh, it's a very unique design that no one else has come out with and it is patented by Legrand. So our modular box design also allows for units to be ganged together. Uh, based on your electrical needs and the available space, ganging them together allows you to dig a single hole but have multiple connections inside of that area. So per the National Electrical Code, uh, the NEC requirements for 15 and 20 up receptacles, they must be weather resistant. All other receptacles should be rated as corrosion resistant. Low voltage boxes may accommodate communications as well as AV services. And this is a unique solution for spaces where you wanna provide event power and support things like maybe concerts and other uh, events where you need uh, AV as well as power and low voltage. So now uh, this picture may look a little bit like the charging stations we talked about earlier, but this is totally different. So once again, I want you to think back to that stubbed up conduit I talked about earlier. Okay, that installation was unsafe and unattractive. Adding something more durable, like one of our power pedestals can stand up to the equipment. We talked about, you know, maintenance equipment, right? Uh, and it can stand up to people. Let me just, I'm sorry, my phone here. Uh, and it can stand up to equipment and people, and they have a nice finished look, okay? In addition, they can support things that are happening more on campus like events and food trucks. A pedestal can provide higher amperages of power and that make permanent power access easy for facility teams to plug in and power up. So again, this could be for standard or higher amperage. These boxes or these pedestals are rated for 15 through 60 amps. But the point is really to, con to create a safer, more durable, good looking connection point that just works better. And our pedestals can be customized based on your device needs and your power needs. They come in multiple finishes, they come in multiple heights, they come available either pre-wired or empty where you wire them up the way you need them with weatherproof and lockable covers. So again, it's for you, the facility manager, not for the general public uh, to use and you can lock the public out. And then with that said, I know I've been talking a lot about permanent solutions, but we do offer a 
temporary solution as well with these cable protectors um, that we see here. And sometimes when you think about it, you don't always have time to think things through in advance. You don't always have time to get those ground boxes or those power pedestals installed before some big event that's just been dumped on you uh, that you have to set up for. Uh, and really, if you think about where we saw a lot of use in these things was with all the temporary healthcare bills that we um, saw last year, especially in New York, but all around the country, there were shortages of hospital space. There was, where do we put a lot of these COVID uh, patients? Uh, a lot of outdoor temporary facilities were set up, outdoor testing facilities were set up, temperature taking facilities were set up and a lot of them still exist. And in those cases, we saw a lot of these cord protectors being purchased and set up to run cords and cables out to these temporary facilities. Oops, went one too far there. So now what we're gonna do is kind of shift things once again uh, and look at things um, for indoors. Let's look at some of the power and charging solutions that we can uh, bring into the interior. So providing safe, convenient access to power and charging is critical. And with the need to maintain six foot social distancing, providing furniture mounted power and charging just makes sense. And it's both easy and practical to do. As people are spreading out in offices, like we talked about, lounges, waiting rooms, hotels, and lobbies, they will need to stay connected and charged. Providing these services right in the furniture allows for safe distancing and staying connected at the same time. Look through this, I'm gonna show you some more things on this slide. If you look through this slide, you can see we have uh, tamper resistant outlets, we have UL, we have ETL, we have for our friends in Canada, CSA, um, these are spill water, spill water rated. And uh, we even have what we call future proof by having some of the newest technology available, which I'll talk through in just a minute, okay? But think again about that distancing. Think again about that um, airport uh, situation I talked about with people clamoring around, looking for some place to plug into. Imagine if everybody's seat that they're sitting in, in had its own outlet for power and charging and people that have to be you know taking cords and borrowing cords I, I always see people borrowing chargers and cords and plugging into the same outlets and unplugging this person's and plugging theirs in it's just not safe that's how we spread um you know viruses so um furniture mounted power solutions and charging solutions really is the wave of the future what I want to talk about for a minute is I, I talked about you know new technology and I'm sure many of you are familiar with USB type C, but just in case you're not, I wanted to kind of walk through what the advantages are. Uh, we're all familiar, familiar with USB type A, which is the larger uh, rectangular opening that we see on the left here in this picture. But the new thing that's coming and is coming on fast and strong is USB type C. And the difference is this, USB type A is strictly for low voltage charging, that's it. But USB type C is gonna be used for not only charging, but in the future is gonna be the power supply to your laptop and other devices. It is gonna be used for file transfers. It's gonna be used for photo transfers. And it's gonna be used for MIDI, what is known as musical instrument digital interface. So as you can see, this USB type C is gonna fill the needs in the future for a long time to come. So a lot of the devices that we offer have either type A or type C or a combination of both type A and type C. And we'll see that when we go forward. So great new technology that's coming down the road and you're gonna be seeing a lot of this type C. So these, these benefits apply in all of the applications that we see here. Social distancing with safe, convenient access to power and charging. The following products are great solutions for commercial offices, hotel lobbies, restaurants, conference rooms, all the areas that we've already talked about. So the nice thing is now you can bring power and charging right up to the desktop or your tabletop. About half of the workers that we interviewed and that we surveyed, like 46% said that they charge their phones or their computers or their iPads at least twice a day with some of them 24% of the people said they charge three times or more per day. 
And there's no more crawling around underneath a table looking for power or stretching power cords. And I'm sure you've all seen this in a conference room from your from the middle of a uh, you know a conference table where people are all trying to plug in to a wall where it's a tripping hazard. So you got these cords being stretched across. Sometimes they're not long enough and in the middle of the air. No more doing that. Now we can bring power and charging safely right up to the desktop surface. Again, going back to that, sur that survey, 67% of the people that we interviewed identified easy, accessible power and charging options as a high priority in meeting rooms. Now you're seeing here our round furniture power, which offers power and charging that you need in a very small, flush design. Again, it can go right in the furniture or right in the surface of your work surface, okay? The nice thing about these things is you have options. The large one that you see here in black is a power, USB-A and USB Type-C, and then the smaller one is just for USB Type-A and C. Again, for facilities managers, think about this. You don't need an electrician. You drill a hole, you pop it in, you plug it in. They come with either six foot or uh, 10 foot cord lengths. They're available black, white, and nickel. But again, quickly and easily install in the furniture or in a surface workspace um, and provide the power and charging that people need. And Legrand is really excited because right now we are the very first people to market with a product that's been um, evaluated and listed to the new UL692A, which specifically addresses portable, movable tables and outlets, pr providing power and low voltage uh, outlets on movable, portable tables. So these are code compliant for daisy chaining, okay? They're great for training spaces and workstations. I know we have a room uh, in our, our offices at West Hartford, we call it the war room. Sometimes this room is set up with five or 10 people. Sometimes there's 50 or 60 people in this room. Sometimes it's set up the tables in a U shape. Sometimes it's set up a classroom style. There's all different uh, you know, ways that these tables are moved around and set up. And it's done quickly and easily now with these um, mod power receptacles that can mount right on each individual table. If you look at the picture here, you can see that where you might have had two or three people at a six foot table in the past, you may only see one person at each one of these tables, but you can reconfigure and move these tables around at will. And there's many ways that you can install these uh, devices as well. So let's take a look at that. Uh, before I do, just wanna point out again, three receptacles for power, one USB-A, one USB-C type of application. So there's what we call a primary unit, there's a secondary unit and an end unit. And you can have a total of five units all together plugged into each other and still maintain uh, that safety without overloading. They're designed, they have built-in circuit breakers uh, and they're designed to, to handle uh, the power and charging that we plugged into a, a total of five of these units being uh, daisy chained together, okay? So there's a primary unit that plugs into the wall, a floor box, a power pole, uh, you know, a poke through, whatever you're using to power the first unit. And then you can have uh, two, what we call middle units or secondary units. And then there's an end unit that doesn't go any further. You can't plug anything else into it. So you have a total of five max units that you can plug into each other. Okay, the nice things about this is they can be plugged into many different surfaces and really um, look nice. And I'll just show you some uh, pictures here. Again, you can see the top left, the unit was mounted flush right into the work surface. And this is a spill water um, tamper resistant receptacle. It meets all code being mounted on that work surface. You can go down to the lower right. It can be mounted surface mounted like this. And again, they can be mounted with screws in a more permanent um, application, or they can be mounted with uh, clamps that literally just clamp on to the table, and then you can unclamp them and move them to another table or another location or um, another piece of furniture. So they are movable. They are very adaptable to whatever your requirements are. Okay, so uh, going back to our surveys, about a third of all office workers use three or more different devices that require power 
or charging at work. Now, this is a picture of what we call our Radiant Furniture Power Center, and they offer really sleek, modern designs with the functionality of USB Type-A and USB Type-C, uh, as well as two traditional power outlets. They're perfect for hospital waiting rooms. Think about people you know, uh, waiting uh, for loved ones that may have been in the hospital. You're sitting in the waiting room. You got to stay in you know, touch with family and friends. Uh, you got to stay charged up. But they're excellent for waiting rooms. They're excellent for hotel lobbies, many other applications, OK? So let's take a look at some more solutions. But again, these are very versatile, and they are installed, and they're plugged in, once again, with no need to have a contractor, electrical contractor, come in and install them. Your facility manager can do that. Now, the next thing I want to look at is a little bit of a jump to a new product that we just came out with, actually a company that we purchased about a year ago called Connect Tracks. You may or may not be familiar with this, but Legrand has always been the leader in development of floor-based cable management solutions. That's That's been a big thing, whether it's floor boxes, power poles, uh, I'm sorry, floor boxes, poke throughs, over the floor raceways. Um, that is where we shine, in-floor distribution centers. This is our newest um, product to add to our family. Uh, Connect Tracks is a single circuit floor-based power and data system that is typically used in conference rooms and in training rooms or wherever one quad receptacle, that's quad four, device is needed for bringing power and data out to a lobby, a kiosk, a lectern, a, uh, a table, wherever needed. So Connect Tracks basically has two product lines. There's what they call their Express and their Flex. The Express kits have just one UPC. What that means is there's one box that any contractor, facility manager can walk in to an electrical distributor, pick up one box, and not have to worry about ordering anything else. Everything that's needed in that box will allow you to come six, eight, nine feet, whatever you want, off the wall and feed these uh, quad receptacles as well as bring data and communications cabling out as well. Um, and they solve a lot of problems right out of the box uh, when you think about reconfiguring spaces, spreading people more further apart, having the ability to make your space more flexible. Okay, um, and then we think about the next uh, project, which is for flex, where you have bigger spaces and you need more flexibility, more than just coming straight out from a wall. Maybe you got to make turns and go in different directions. Um, the flex is a product that is usually specified into a project and it is custom built for your exact needs. Okay, they're not in stock. They're there's something that you would specify and we would build for you to meet your requirements. Unlike the Flex, unlike, unlike the Express, which is right on the distributor shelf. So uh, a couple options that I wanna show you in the Express kit is that they can either be surface mounted like you see on the left right here, and they can go over carpet, tile, wood, it doesn't matter, cement, or you can have the under carpet version that you see on the bottom right. OK, and the under carpet version um, comes with the ramps that you need on either side and around the end so that when you lay your carpet squares back down on top of the system, you it you wouldn't even know that there was a bump um, or a slight rise. It's totally ADA um, approved for you know wheelchairs and everything to roll over. You would barely be able to even know that it exists under the carpet. But again, now you have the flexibility to redesign spaces quickly and easily simply by peeling up your carpet squares and putting them back down as you reconfigure and reposition uh, the, the express kits as needed. So uh, we're gonna move on again to something we talked about earlier, which is touch free. We talked about the desire to be able to uh, not only charge, but connect, turn on and off lights, uh, and not have to touch surfaces. So um, the first thing I want to talk about is this little charging puck. And I, I love this thing. I have a different version of this one that actually goes on the wall in my house. And when I first got it, I thought, you know, how is this inductive charging going to work? But it actually works very, very well. I, I thought it would be slow. 
is fast. And the thing is this, it's compatible inductive charging where you just take your phone, you lay it right on top of this unit. And this unit, again, you drill a hole, you pop it in the hole, you plug it in. And now nobody has to touch wires and, and those little cube charging cubes. Uh, you know, you don't have to even touch the surface. You just put your phone down, you pick your phone up. You don't have to touch anything, okay? The nice thing is, is that it works with all of your iPhone 8 up and all of your Galaxy uh, 8 and 7s and 5s. It, it works with all of your newer phones, okay? And the thing is this, 7.5 watts of charging for Apple devices and 10 watts for Samsung devices. Most of your average chargers, your low voltage USB type chargers are somewhere in around the three, one and a half to three watts of charging. So you can see that these units really do work well. They charge very fast uh, and they install just quickly and easily. Uh, I did want to put out tell you that one thing that these things are uh, what they call, well, I'll go into that in the next slide. I'll, I'll talk about this in a minute. Uh, the next thing is our wave switch. And this again, talking about touch-free, right? These surfaces that need to be cleaned all the time that you really want to avoid. This is a switch that is touchless. You just wave your hand in front of it. And I don't care if you're talking about commercial office spaces or even upscale homes, a lot of applications. Simply wave your hand in front of the switch to turn lights on and off. With this touch-free motion, uh, you know, again, you're eliminating the need to clean that surface and you're eliminating the risk of, of transmitting these um, the viruses, okay? So compatible with all 15 amp, 120 volt, single pole and three-way loads. The same switch, the same wave switch can be used for single pole or three-way. Um, the nice thing is, is this is what we call our Adorn series. It looks a little different than what you may see in most houses these days, which is something people call, uh, you know, a rocker style or decora style. But uh, we're going to have a 20 amp version of this switch coming out uh, in the next month or two. And by the third quarter of this year, we'll have what we call our Radiant series. And the Radiant looks just like a regular decora or rocker style um, switch. So it'll just blend right into your existing um, facility or home. Another way to go touchless or touch-free is with smart switches and devices and dimmers, okay? So if you look at these here, um, basically what you have is a system where you download an app to your phone, okay? And you can control these switches and outlets and dimmers all from your phone to turn lights on and off at will and you never have to touch any surfaces and the really nice thing about this is that they work with google they work with alexa they work with things like nest and ring and the reason that they work with all these other devices from many many different manufacturers is that they're ocf certification now ocf you're saying well what's that basically it's like nema if you're familiar with nema it's um, just like your NEMA receptacles, is so that any appliance, anything that you buy will plug into a standard plug configuration. Well, this OCF certification just means that all of our devices will work with all these other smart home devices like Alexa and Google and Nest, okay? And there's no need for what we call a bridge. These work with the Wi-Fi that's in your house or your office. So here's just a quick look at a lot of the smart devices that we have. All of these are nice options for touch-free. We have switches, we have receptacles, we have dimmers, we have single pole and three-way switches. We have plugins. These little plugins right here that you see on the uh, bottom right, this is something that plugs into an existing outlet and you use these buttons to dim up or down a lamp that's plugged in. Or you just have a regular switch that you use this button to turn that switch uh, that plug on or off, anything that's plugged into it, you just control on and off with that button or again with the app that you download onto your phone. Um, it's quick, it's easy. I've done it throughout my house now. Uh, and it, I mean, a, a child could do it easier than me because they, they do anything with technology easier than some of my age. But um, literally, you download the app, you, you scan a barcode or a QR code on the device, 
and it literally syncs everything up. And in minutes, you're controlling your devices from your smartphone. Great way to stay touch free. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about is a new NEMA standard that's come out for COVID-19 cleaning and disinfecting. It's the, it's the disinfecting guide for electrical equipment. And basically what we, we've talked about is the need to touch these surf to clean these surfaces that are touched often, like switches and receptacles, okay? And if you're cleaning them often, that means you're paying someone to clean these surfaces. And the problem with that is a lot of switches and receptacles in the face plates are not designed or manufactured to have a lot of these very harsh chemicals sprayed on them. The plastic can actually crack and become warped from a lot of these cleaning agents. And if that happens, the, the contacts inside these devices can come loose. And if that happens, it's a fire hazard. Uh, additionally, they're gonna look terrible, okay? and. Um, Again, you don't want it to look terrible. You don't want it to have an unsafe situation uh, where contacts inside your devices become loose. So um, you can buy switches and receptacles that are stainless steel, that are nylon. Uh, the face plates and the devices themselves are resistant to that cracking and that distortion caused by repetitive um, cleaning. So with that, I'm just gonna go to one more slide which brings us almost to the end here. And that is the slide on our resources. If you're interested in more information on any of the things that I talked about today and a whole host of other great products from Legrand, you can just go to legrand.us. Or if you wanna go right to the things we talked about today, what we call our power to change solutions, you can go to legrand.us slash power to change. It'll bring you right to a location where you're gonna find all kinds of great resources uh, uh, that really cover the products that we talked about today and the solutions that we talked about today. So with that, what we'll do is I'll say thank you so much for the time we spent today. I know I'm running a little behind. We still have about 10 minutes uh, left for uh, questions and answers. So at this time, I'll ask Ann if she would go ahead and let me know if there's any questions that I can answer for you. If there are, just use that little question poll on the right-hand side. Uh, type your questions in there, and um, Anne will be glad to pose those questions to me. Wonderful, wonderful. Thanks, Bill. Uh, thanks for the presentation and that uh, wealth of information. And uh, thank you all for your attention and for sending in uh, some of the questions we've gotten in. We'll, we'll try to get through some of them. Um, we'll, we'll jump right into it. Uh, so, Bill, yes, uh, let's see. I'll start with um, actually working backwards. You had just shown a slide, a few slides back about... Um, some of the products that are able to handle cleaning, uh, cleaning products, et cetera. So uh, there was a specific question a few slides back about the wireless charging pucks. Um, are those able to be wiped down to maintain? Can you talk about that or, or maybe any of the other um, products along that line and cl any sure. cleaning questions you've ha run into? Sure. So most of our products do use a higher grade of, of phenolics and, and higher grades of nylons. Um, they're designed, again, for these work surfaces. We know that they need to be spill-proof, waterproof. We know that they need to be cleaned. So uh, I can't say that everything that we make, a lot of our, uh, we, we have every grade from good, better, and best uh, uh, products out there, but I would say most of the products that we talked about today are really designed for those uh, harsher um, environments that can maintain being cleaned. But that's not to say that everything that we have in our product line is designed, designed for that. But I would say most of our products, you know, especially when you think about nylon face plates, nylon receptacles, um, phenolic uh, receptacles, and stainless steel face plates, these are all uh, good choices for that, um, you know, that wash down need. Okay, awesome. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so then I'll, I'll jump back into kind of a more uh, general questions that we've come across, uh, kind of condensing these uh, along the idea of what, what a lot of folks have been going through with, um, you know, changing changing workspaces, reconfigurations, um, you know, across the board, like I'm sure you've seen and, and those in the audience know. So uh, the question is, from your perspective and from Legrand's perspective, what are you seeing as kind of the most important things to focus on uh, when renovating, reconfiguring, uh, office spaces and preparing people to come back, uh, you know, from the power standpoint, what are some things you've seen and some, you know, maybe kind of best practices you could share? Sure. So one of the things I, I showed towards the end was connect tracks. 
um, I think you're going to see space be reconfigured to bring people back to work right away. Okay, but then as things relax, we get back to normal, you may want to reconfigure that space again uh, to add more density of people as we start feeling better, as that need to, you know, stop wearing masks and stop, you know, that six foot social distancing. So I think anything that you can do to make your space flexible is going to be really key so that you can look at that space, you can repurpose it, redesign it to meet changing needs. Who knows when that next pandemic, I, I, I just heard this the other day that we can look for, like, I, I don't ever remember a pandemic in my life before this one. And, and now all of a sudden what they're saying is we're going to see a, a pandemics like this on a more regular basis. I mean, there's something to really look forward to, and I'm not trying to scare people, but if that's the case, we may be in this um, mode of needing to be flexible far into the future. And that flexibility with products like Connect Tracks, where you can peel up or not even if, you know, just lay it right on your carpet uh, uh, with uh, the surface mounted flex track uh, or the under carpet version, where you just have to peel up your carpets. You know, that flexibility is nice. I think the mod power we talked about with the, uh, especially for uh, training rooms and, and things of that nature in classrooms where you may want to reconfigure tables. We do it all the time in this room that we call our war room. It's, it's really a meeting room, but it's also used for training. Uh, being able to reposition those tables, things like that mod power that connects right to the table quickly and easily, um, I think is good. So I think, the, I think the bottom line is if I was to sum it up in one word, flexibility. Think about flexibility because um, we're not going to go back to normal anytime soon. And even when we do, we got to be prepared to be flexible and maybe go back to some of these protocols that we're seeing today. Okay, thank you. And I want to jump over to the uh, outdoor spaces uh, topic because uh, we had some interest there. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of sum it up uh, with, with two questions. But, uh, you know, what types of things, again, are, are you all seeing people doing with outdoor spaces you know, in response to the um, pandemic? Uh, but I want to kind of put a finer point on that. A specific question was, you know, we plan we plan to create more outdoor spaces for employees to use and, and want to add power. So, um, you know, kind of generally speaking, what can we what can we expect in terms of installation for these types of solutions you've discussed? In terms of you know time disruption to landscape, um, you know, someone who's just kind of you know starting out, so to speak, with this. Sure. So um, we talked about a couple different products there. Now, if you're talking about putting in um, for, for guests, and we talk, we're not talking about for facility purposes with the ground boxes and the, the power pedestals, but for the charging stations, the outdoor power and charging stations, mm -hmm. that is a great long-term solution. Again, it, it's going to be more expensive to install it because you're going to have to trench mm -hmm. and you're going to have to put conduit in the ground. Uh, usually two to four feet down, depending on where you live and what the codes are. And then you're going to have to stub up. And, and so there is definitely an expense and there's a disruption to space. But the once it's done, these units are permanent. They're outdoor permanent stations designed to be, you know, weatherproof and long lasting and durable. So there is an expense. Now, the other thing we talked about is the solar. OK, solar charging. Now, it's not power. It's just charging. We could have come out with a solar unit that was for power and charging. But if you think about that for power, you would have to have much larger solar arrays, which would not fit or be able to be supported on that four inch pole that we talked about. So we chose to make a device that's just for charging, that's your tablets and your phones, um, you know, just low voltage charging. So you can have a much smaller solar panel on a standard four inch pole that's going to install quickly and easily in a matter of hours with little disruption at all to the space and, and a greatly reduced cost. OK, but again, you're not going to have power. You're just going to have charging. So, you know, we've seen, uh, boy, I'll tell you, campuses, college campuses, universities, even high schools. We did a, quite a few high schools right here in the state of Connecticut. We actually used them for some um, for some marketing purposes, but they had a courtyard outside and the students actually love, because you think about young kids today, they don't go anywhere without that phone and wherever they're hanging out, they wanna be able to charge up. So, you know, the, the application for these outdoor power and charging stations uh, is huge. And I don't think you're gonna see us ever go back to not having that flexibility 
of using those outdoor spaces. Uh, I think that once we develop them and they're here, they're going to stay because people are going to like that flexibility to go outside. The weather's beautiful today here in Connecticut. It's 65 degrees and sunny. It's actually 67. And hey, uh, you know, if I wasn't doing this right now, I'd be working out on the deck right now. But um, you know, I, I think outdoor spaces are here to stay. And I think some of these solutions that we talked about are, are here to stay. People are going to want to have that social distancing, their outdoor space, that flexibility, you know, to feel like, hey, it's a nice day. I'm at work, but I can sit outside too. Um, so I hope that answers the question, but I, I do think also for your facility managers, some of those boxes that we talked about that go in the ground or some of those power pedestals, they're, they're, they're more permanent solutions, but I think uh, you know, going well into the future, we're gonna see more and more use of the outdoor space, even in the colder climates. Okay, okay, thank you. And uh, you know, thank you everyone for your questions. I do have one last question, just switching gears quickly, and then we can, um, we can wrap it up. Um, the question was for furniture power, for some of the items you were talking about, um, furniture power. I don't have the specific product name here in the question, um, but I'm, I'm thinking it was the one where you have the, the, the power in the chairs for hospitality, commercial offices, things like that. The question was, uh, is it a hard wire or a, a soft plug, a soft wire? Soft wire. All, the, all of the furniture power is soft, it's plug-in. So okay. all you have to do as a facility person is literally just cut the hole. It comes with the template. You, you put the device in, you mount it from the back, you plug in. They, you, most of these units come with either a six foot or a 10 foot cord. So yeah, that's a good question. None of these are hardwired. All of these are um, soft plug in. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Bill. Uh, thank you well, very thank much. You. Appreciate it. We, we had fun and, and appreciate you inviting us along. And uh, again, if you have anybody, any questions out there, that Legrand.us, you can also find a local rep using that site uh, if you want to ask, uh, you know, a local rep to call on you and, and help answer more questions or show you some products, something of that nature. Just go to Legrand.us and you can uh, find a local agent. Awesome. All right. Thank okay. you. Thank uh, you. Bye bye. Good afternoon. And thanks again to everyone in the audience for attending, um, for your attention, and of course, for the questions to keep the conversation going. Uh, a recording of this webinar will be available on our website at facilityexecutive.com. Uh, you can also check out Legrand's website, as Bill had mentioned, legrand.us uh, forward slash power to change. And uh, thanks again. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.